on this cracking open, I'm going to take apart not one, but two iPhone 11s. I'm going to show you how to open them, give you a look at the hardware inside, and then explain why, if you damage your iPhone, your repair options are kind of limited. But these aren't ordinary iPhones. These phones were torture tested by CNET's very own Lexi Savides, so definitely check out her video after watching this one. They both sustained damage during those tests. The front glass on this iPhone 11 Pro popped up slightly. It has several stuck pixels on the screen, and there's some discoloration on the back. On this regular iPhone 11, the rear camera stopped working. The front camera works fine, and the screen looks good. But no matter which of the rear cameras I select, there's nothing but black. I'm kind of hoping this is just a loose cable, but there's only one way to find out, so let's get to it. The process for disassembling the iPhone 11s is basically the same as it has been for the last several generations. We remove a pair of pentalobe screws on either side of the lightning port, use a bit of heat and a suction cup device to pop loose the display, and then carefully disconnect the delicate cables connected to the battery, of which there are two, and then the display assembly. Now that we've got the front panels off both phones, we get our first look inside. Now, looking at the iPhone 11, uh, we have the standard rectangular shaped uh, battery here on the side. We have our logic board over here. We have the Taptic engine, clearly labeled down at the bottom, along with the lightning connector and the speakers. Up at the top, we have the rear camera assembly, which I'll be getting to in a moment. And then uh, we have the uh, front-facing camera uh, dot sensor here and the NIR camera over here, all this used for Face ID. Uh, on the display assembly, we have a really important feature, the flood illuminator, proximity sensor, ambient light sensor, all that is in this assembly up here. I'll be getting to that more, especially the flood illuminator, which comes into uh, play when we're talking about repairs. Um, also, on the uh, looking at the Pro's display, we have the same uh, technology attached to the front panel up here. And then looking at the hardware attached to the body, we have an L-shaped battery. We saw this first back with the iPhone XS uh, Max. Um, and we also see the, we see the uh, circuit board, logic board over here. Again, the Taptic engine. Uh, lightning connectors, speakers down here. So we have the camera assembly here, uh, uh, which we'll be getting to. And then uh, the, again, the front facing camera, the uh, NIR camera, and uh, the uh, dot uh, projector there as well. So let's go ahead, let's remove some more hardware uh, and see what else we can find. Okay, now that I've got most of the hardware removed from our regular iPhone 11, uh, we can see all the individual components. Now, looking at the frame or the body here, I did decide to leave the battery attached. There is an adhesive strip under the battery that I could pull and it would release the battery, but I I'm gonna leave it attached for now. I really don't like to mess with lithium ion batteries if I don't have to because of the fire risk if they get damaged. Attached to the display like we talked about, I didn't remove the um, flood illuminator that's here, the, the microphone or the microphone and uh, ear speaker assembly. I, I didn't really remove any of that uh, from the display. This display was working fine and removing this can be a little wonky sometimes, but we did remove the uh, speaker assembly here from the external speaker assembly. We removed the Taptic engine from the bottom of the phone there. Uh, we removed the rear camera assembly. Now this is what was causing us problems uh, on the uh, on this phone. I'm gonna see when we put it back together if maybe one of the cables were was loose. I don't see any visible damage, so I'm, I'm not sure what was actually causing the problem. The cable doesn't appear to be damaged in any way, so hopefully when we reassemble this, it, it'll work. Um, then there's the, the SIM uh, card uh, reader here, and then obviously the um, logic board. Now this is a stacked logic board, and both phones uh, have a stacked logic board. On the board, we have Apple's A13 Bionic SOC, or that's their system on a chip. There's also a RAM chip, there's flash storage, uh, audio codec, power management ICs. Uh, Apple's new U1 Ultra Wideband Spatial Awareness chip that helps it orient itself in relationship to other Apple devices. Um, and of course, all the wireless chips. Now, 
unfortunately, uh, in previous iPhones, uh, before Apple went to this really sort of stacked design, I could remove some of the metal shielding away from these chips, pop those off and give you a look at the silicon. Unfortunately, with these stacked designs, if I were to try to heat this up, if I were to try to separate uh, the two layers of this chip, it would most likely damage it. So I wanna put this phone together and see if I can't get it, the camera working again. Uh, so I'm not gonna do that. Um, moving over to the iPhone uh, Pro here, the 11 Pro, um, I'm also not gonna sort of remove all the internal hardware from it. Um, basically, it's the same process as we did with the regular iPhone. And it took me probably about 45 minutes. And that's rushing uh, because we're filming. I don't wanna do that with the, with the Pro because really the only thing that it had problems with other than the back um, was the display. We're gonna try to get maybe a replacement display and, and see if that'll fix stuck pixels that we had on this phone. Well, that brings me to the final point that I wanted to make in this video, which is about the repairability of these phones and whether or not it makes sense for you to try to replace a screen if it gets damaged or a camera if it's not working. And in short, the answer I think at this point is probably not. Sure, you can buy aftermarket parts online. You may even be able to get um, genuine Apple parts online. But if you don't have the software tools that the Apple techs have at the Apple store uh, or at an authorized service center, you won't get the full functionality. Uh, for example, if you replace the screen, you're probably gonna lose multi-touch, you'll lose high brightness, you'll lose performance features like true tone, night shift, haptic touch. If you replace the flood illuminator with a flood illuminator that isn't specifically tied to the circuit board that it came with, um, you'll lose access to Face ID. So in my estimation, while yes, it's kind of a pain to have to take your phone back to Apple to have it fixed and not be able to do it yourself, um, I honestly don't believe it's worth the trouble anymore. This took me at least 45 minutes to take apart, to take all the parts out. It goes to show how difficult it can be and how time consuming it to be. And if you damage any of the small little cables, a part that was working may not be working um, when you get done. Well, that does it for this cracking open. If there's a gadget you'd like to see me tackle next, leave a comment. And if you find this video helpful, be sure to click the like button or subscribe to our channel. And check out CNET for all the latest consumer tech news, torture tests, product reviews, and how-tos.